Each year we welcome thousands of nonprofits to the Nonprofit Technology Conference. This year, the 12 NTC will be held in San Francisco on April 3rd through the 5th. Learn more at n10.org forward slash NTC. All right, we are back, and I'm here with Vanessa, who is going to introduce her companions, and uh, we're going to talk about the Global Leadership Council. Hi there, my name is Vanessa Reinsmith. I'm the Director of Outreach for Start Some Good. Um, I'm excited today to actually get to introduce you to two of our NetSquared local organizers, Eli and April. Um, so I am going to let Eli and April introduce themselves, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about the NetSquared local groups, um, about our global um, leadership council, uh, which is a new program that we're running um, through NetSquared, um, and then also hopefully provide you guys with a little bit of insight um, and ideas in terms of organizing at the local level. So if you plan either workshops or meetups or either with the 501 Tech Club, a NetSquared local group, or another group in your own community, um, that hopefully you'll, you'll get to learn a little bit more from there. So for now, I'm going to turn it over to April to tell you guys a little bit more about herself. Hi everybody, my name is April Kyle and I am a native of Houston, Texas where I was a NetSquared co-organizer for a couple of years. Um, I moved to the Bay Area a year ago and the NetSquared folks were looking for a uh, organizer for San Francisco and I am a NetSquared fangirl so totally joined up and I've been running the group in San Francisco for about six months now. Hi there, my name is Eli. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. You can tell because of my funny accent. So I've been doing the NetSquare local thing for about two and a half years now, um, having a great time at it. Um, and can you guys tell us a little bit about just some of the topics that you guys have had for some of the events that you've hosted? So again, to try to give ideas to some of the folks. Um, and also maybe one or two, um, like a quick summary about one of your favorite events that you guys have done so far with your group. So we did in Houston a lot of uh, kind of having nonprofits come in and talk about the things they were needing and what technology challenges that they were having. And that was always good because you get a good community that could offer up new things that maybe they'd never heard of and kind of volunteer on the spot. Um, in San Francisco, we've had a lot of uh, big speakers. We had Craig Newmark speak in January, which was really cool. Um, and then, actually, I'd say, you know, probably the favorite event so far has been, uh, we had Build It Green, which is a local organization uh, that focuses on green building and certifies people for green building. They came out and spoke about their technology and some of the stuff that they were doing. And I really liked that event because I followed up with them, and they had connected with, like, two volunteers right there to actually come out and help them work on their tech. So that that was cool. That's the goal. So in Vancouver, we're doing the full series of events. We're going to do, you know, workshops, panels, you know, Q&A kind of stuff. So uh, some of the recent events we've done is we did a, a session about last month, I guess, called uh, Why Network Nonprofits Are Better at Online Campaigning. And so we went in and said, like, what are the characteristics of organizations which actually work well on the Internet? And, uh, and why is it that some other organizations keep on trying and failing over and over again? Um, and uh, actually, earlier this week, we did uh, online tools, speed geeking. So, uh, you know, we brought in people. They all did their five-minute, like, here's a fancy thing I know how to do. Check this out. Um, and that was actually really gratifying for me. One. I wasn't even there. It's all my fantastic volunteer team who actually ran it because they're, they're great. Um, and Darian, I miss you. Um, and, uh, and also, we actually had like a tweet come out of that where someone said like, hey, I just came out of the AFP national or international conference, which was also held in Vancouver last week. Um, and what that tweet said is basically, I learned more in the last hour and a half than I did in those previous three days. We felt pretty smug about that because our events are free. Thank you. So one of the sessions that we were kind of all a part of um, yesterday was we were talking about the challenges of being a local organizer. Because again, um, as we all know, we're, we're often volunteers, um, and organizing at the local level is hard. Um, and so one of the things that we did was really talk about the challenges and, and more importantly, the solutions or ideas in terms of solving specific problems. So um, I guess the question I have for both April and Eli is what is one tip or tips that you feel like for yourself as a local organizer that you would want to share with other organizers who might be feeling 
just the challenges of either organizing independently, struggling to find sponsorship, maybe struggling to find a specific topic to talk about, just that sort of one go-to tip that you would like to sort of share with the rest of the community. I would say tap into the network that you have. Um, I'm thinking specifically of NetSquared. You know, there's organizers all across the globe, and I know one of the big things that came out of our conversations with the GLC the past couple of weeks is getting able, being able to see what you know they're doing in Vancouver and in other places, which inspires me for things to do uh, in San Francisco. So I would say you know the easy thing to do is just connect with people that are you know also doing these same organizing events, and you can kind of share struggles and then you know do some brainstorming on ideas and topics. I totally have another variant on the exact same thing, which is don't try and do it alone. I spent two years trying to organize these monthly meetups by myself. And, uh, well, I failed a lot because I was trying to be good at everything and spread myself too thin. So in the last six months, I've actually recruited a wider organizing team. And that has made me a much happier man. And the events are much better because when we talk about finding venues, sponsorships, people who will speak at future events, if I open up my network um, and bring more people and more brains to the table, all those things naturally fall out of that. Thank you. And actually, April had a great lead-in, so I want to talk a little bit more about the GLC. Um, as I said, the GLC is the Global Leadership Council. Council. It's an initiative through uh, TechSoup and NetSquared. And so we have nine individuals who are all local organizers that came together to San Francisco over the past two weeks. And we've talked about everything, again, in terms of the challenges that they're facing at the local level and also how they can organize among themselves as leaders in their community, but also as a resource, really, to one another so that we can work collectively to continue to sort of move forward this idea of technology and social change. Um, so I just wanted to give them both just a, a little moment to just share a little bit about their own experiences, what their takeaway was, and again, just some insights to, to share with the audience at large. And we'll, we'll mix it up. We'll start with Eli this time. All right. Here we go. Here we go. So. What did I get out of this whole GLC experience? Um, it's actually very similar to what I'm getting out of being here at NTC, which is we all go off into our regular lives, and most of us are not surrounded by people who are as obsessed and passionate about like this technology, social change intersection. So we often feel like a little crazy. Like, are we the only people who are actually obsessed about this thing? Like, maybe I'm. Maybe something's wrong with me. And so to actually be surrounded by this tribe of people who share your passions and your interests is, is so invigorating. It's, it, it renews you. And, and the energy that I'm going to take out of, out of NTC, out of what I've got of the Global Leadership Council, because I know I'm not alone. I'm actually part of this tribe of people who are a little bit crazy, but, but I still think on to something is a great experience. Everything he said, and then some. I mean, it was just an amazing experience to be with people who, yeah, not only share the same passions, but are actually going through the same struggles that you are in your own organization efforts. Um, and to be able to connect and, and realize that, yeah, you, like Eli said, you're not alone, and there are people out there that are just as interested in going through the exact same stuff. You can't put a price on that. I mean, I've never been more energized and excited about the work that we're doing with NetSquared and the work that we're doing with technology and social good in general. But we're also very tired. Yes. <laughs> yes. But in a good way. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been awesome. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I personally have been incredibly inspired. I mean, I think both between bringing together the Global Leadership Council, also just being here at NTC, the, the energy about being around people, I think that Eli put it best in terms of this idea of tribes. You know, we all work very hard, regardless if it's in a volunteer capacity, if we're a nonprofit organization. We're all trying to do our jobs both well, but also to sort of achieve a, a greater good um, in terms of really driving social change in whatever cap capacity that is. So it's always really nice and exciting when you have the opportunity to acknowledge who that tribe is as well. Um, one of the things I just wanted to make sure that wasn't forgotten, but um, 
since you guys are kind of from all over, I want to give you, I want Eli and April just to give you sort of their information of how you can connect with them. So, for example, if you're in the Vancouver area and you want to get involved with the Net Squared local group there, um, Eli will tell you sort of his info to, to do that, and April here, also in San Francisco. Um, myself, please feel free to connect with me. Probably the easiest way is Twitter, um, which is V Rhinesmith. Um, R-H-I-N-E-S-M-I-T-H -E um, to continue any of this conversation there. Um, Eli, what's the best way to get in touch with you? So if you want to hunt me down, Twitter is easy because the handle is my first name, Elijah, E-L-I-J-A-H. Um, or if you're into the Googling thing, you can go to nettuesday.ca and you're going to find out all about the local meetup. Um, and as my former boss, Ed Shippel, says, I'm a contrarian. So you can find me on everything as this is not April, even though I am. Uh, <laughs> and there is a story behind that. And then San Francisco Meetup, if you just go to meetup uh, slash SFNet Squared, that's us. And we're also on Facebook. And then Twitter is SFN2. Um, so I wanted to also ask you both, um, both between your experiences, um, with the GLC and here at NTC, but what are you guys most excited about now for the, the coming year in terms of tech for change, tech and social good, whether it was a connection you made or a session you were in or just your own sort of feeling of what are you looking forward to in this space or going forward? And I can give you a, a 30 seconds to think about it. Okay. I think I'm most excited about just seeing now that we have connected on the level we have, it's kind of like combining all the superheroes together, so like the Avengers, I guess. Um, and I want to see like you know I, what we can all do together because previously, before you know the GLC and then the time here at uh, NTC, I wouldn't have necessarily reached out to Vancouver or explored some of the technologies that are here at the conference. Um, now that we've been exposed to them and just have so much more power, uh, I'm just excited to see what we all do together. So sector wise. What I'm really excited about is uh, we're starting to move past the obsessed with tools part and actually start saying, like, how do we use these strategies and, and tool sets to actually take human beings and connect them at the local level? So it's no longer like, woo, we're building a giant Twitter list, but rather, like, how do we use this Twitter community and actually get them out into the real world and start doing some face-to-face -face connections? Thank you. And I think... Um, something else, and I wanted to sort of talk about it, but again, sort of the insights specifically we're learning from here in some of the sessions that you guys weren't able to attend, um, to sort of think about what was your sort of one learning or takeaway. And I'll actually start, so then you guys can think about it. Um, I did a session with Amy Sample Ward, um, and we were talking about how to design for online community engagement. And I think that one of the things that I had the opportunity to speak to, but I think also came a lot from the audience, was this idea of commitment and that the, the tools are always going to continue to change and, and we're having a lot of conversations about the tools, but making sort of that step back again as an organization to figure out what is your capacity for commitment um, and your capacity for commitment within the communities that you work um, and help and have that sort of help to drive what those tools are, what that engagement looks like. And I think Commitment can happen in a variety of ways, whether you're a large organization, you can commit an entire department, or whether you're an organization of two, and it's purely sort of a cultural decision to make the commitment to the people in which you're trying to serve and making the time to communicate with them and engage with them. And I think that, um, you know, I think if you're willing to really make that engagement from the top and as part of your organization and institution as a whole, you can't fail. And I think it's because your communities are really smart, whether you're engaging with them both online and, and in real life, and we're relationship building. And so I think that's maybe my challenge for, for you, is that when you go back in maybe to work on Monday or you go to talk with your volunteers, uh, your next local group is to really sort of talk about, you know, what is the commitment you yourself are currently making, your department and your, your organization or institution as a whole, and, and to sort of start there in terms of the conversation. I think the other big thing, you know, coming off of that is looking at the why we're using these things. Um, instead of just hearing, you know, we need to be on Twitter, we need to be on Facebook, we need a blog, we need all of these tools, like Eli mentioned. Instead, let's step back and think about, okay, why do we really want to do it? Who's the real audience? And get back more to actually making real connections and not just having a presence just for the sake of having a presence. So because apparently I'm not original, um, <laughs> I'm going to say what April just said. 
Um, the word that really stuck with me through this couple days has been reciprocity, which is I've become very good in my day job at spitting things out into the world, but maybe less so in actually like being in service to the people who I say I'm, I'm representing. So to be more mindful of that and make sure that I am truly being in service is what I'm going to take away from this week. Great. And I just want to say um, thank you again to Eli and April for sharing their experiences over the past couple weeks. Um, and also thank you to, to all of you for, for being here, for participating in the conversation, for your willingness to want to learn and, and to keep doing what you're doing. Um, and again, get, reach out, connect with us. We'd love to, we'd love to connect with you. So thank you.